So as part of, part of the study series for HowToDigitalPaint.com, I'm going to talk about doing studies from movie screenshots. Now the reason I really love doing uh, movie screenshots, studies from them, is because they have really great lighting. There's usually storytelling going on. The director's very deliberate about the things and um, yeah, they tend to be a lot of a lot of great elements in them that you can learn a lot from. In particular, one of the directors I really like is Terence Malik, who makes great use of lighting and just overall great cinematography in his work. This is some screenshots from a movie called The New World. And I'm looking at uh, a resource for screenshots which is called cinemasquid.com and when you go to that website you'll see a link up the top for screenshots and then just choose a film of your preference. Another great website is moviescreenshots.blogspot.com screenmusings.org and leavemethewhite.com You may have others that you know. Um, if you know them let us know in the comments. Um, but yeah, just have a great look around, and now I'll show you an example of actually painting a movie screenshot. So, um, let's get on to it. So now I'm just doing a screen cut study of uh, Days of Heaven, or a screenshot from Days of Heaven. I've just made a new A4 image. Uh, new document and then place the screenshot into it and then duplicated the screenshot, moved it to the side and then cropped the image down and then filled the the original or the duplicated photo with a grey colour and then pressing control click on the layer thumbnail to select that area then holding control H to hide it and that will keep everything that I paint within within that boundary and it also keeps everything in the same proportion to help my eyes see the drawing more accurately and I'm really just painting big with the airbrush choosing my colors from the color picker and using the hue saturation brightness sliders using a combination of a big soft round brush hard round brush and also the smudge tool also the eyedropper holding alt which allows me to pick different colors on the canvas and then as soon as you let go of alt it switches back to the back to the brush tool so now on a new layer just drawing the figure in thinking more about the big shapes these being the head and a jacket and then roughly placing the f features within that so this will be a guide for me you can you can just refine a grayscale a grayscale kind of underpainting this way and work from that but I decided that I want to practice my drawing more so I'm going to draw some lines over this and this being sped up 10 times so you know take your time with it almost every mark I'm making I'm checking back to the original image that I'm copying from just to make sure that the marks I'm making are accurate and checking things such as the horizontal relationships of different elements of the picture and other other forms of measuring. Check out my previous video on a master copy where I discuss the different techniques you can use as visual aids for checking things by eye when doing observational drawing and painting. So now just sketching, refining a few things Zooming in and out helps to reset your mind 
as well as flipping the canvas horizontal. Things that are wrong will tend to stand out more because you're tricking your mind into seeing a new image. Also, you can take a break. You know, you don't want to. Um, you don't want to injure yourself like I did. I used to never take breaks and just would end up really sore by the end of the day. But I'm being a bit more smart about that and taking breaks now. So when you take a break, you'll return to the image and see some things that are, you know, you might not have noticed when you were just staring at it because you become a bit accustomed to the problems. So this is the process I usually take with my images, whether I'm drawing from observation or from imagination. I'll tend to think more about the image as a whole, blocking in some areas, and then going in and refining the lines. Depending on the complexity of what I'm painting, I might only do one layer of lines, I might do four layers, you know, depending on how clean I want them. Or sometimes I take the approach of just blocking in big masses of colour and value, and then just painting into those. Either way you can find works and uh, you'll find you'll find different approaches better for you know different situations. So that's just a matter of practice and also preference. Um, there I'm checking the drawing by just placing it over the original. Um, I'm trying not to use that as a crutch, so I I usually leave that to the end. But I'm checking it there because I just want to make sure of different habits I might be forming. Like if I find I'm forming a habit of always making things wider, I might notice that when I when I put it over the original drawing. And because it is a study, I'm trying to maximize the things I can learn. So just on a new layer beneath that, I've blocked in the rough color. I've, I've blocked in a base color, which is more just an aid for selection, and then just placing blobs of color on there. Thinking more about shapes and areas of value and color, rather than, you know, blending too much at this point. I'm trying to get myself into the habit of being more deliberate with the colours that I put down and not just kind of laying it down and then thinking, oh, well, I can fix it later. I'm thinking more about um, being very decisive as if I was painting with oils because obviously when you paint with oils, um, you know, you can't, you can't be too reckless with how you do things, you want to put the right colour down, the right shape and value. And it also saves time as much as as much as you might think it um it would take longer that you're you know taking more time to figure out what colour you're gonna put down before you put it down. It actually saves time in the end because you don't have to end up going back and fixing things too much if you're much more deliberate and accurate with what you put down in the first place. But as you can see it's um it's not perfect, but that's the reason we do studies is to learn and become better at making more accurate decisions. I do like the style that's developing though, although what I'm painting may look a bit more um, almost cartoony or um, yeah I'm not, not too sure of the word or stylized um, I do like I do like the effect that it's giving then that you can see the brush strokes and things although I understand this is a young girl and I don't want it to look too masculine. Sometimes when 
value value shifts to two to sudden and color shifts to two sudden sometimes I can um, just make it look non feminine for some reason. I believe that's because women tend to have softer features than men. But that comes with blending, so I don't worry about it too much. Um, I see those big blobs at the start, but as I go with the blending, those disappear. And I really find this sort of painting difficult, um, you know, well, this sort of lighting setup where you have very subtle shifts of value and color. It, it makes it quite difficult to to differentiate um, the color and what you're putting down. But that's the reason I'm doing this study, is to practice that and get better at it. Because we want to always work on our weaknesses and then eventually they become our strengths. So yeah, using the eyedropper constantly, holding alt, planning my colours. And you'll find you'll find the further you get into the painting, the more you won't have to color pick in the sense of using the sliders and color pick a window. You'll be able to just pick and choose colors from the canvas. Not only will that make it easier, it also helps to tie the image together as you bring some colors from the background into the foreground. It helps give the sense that these are ambient colors that are affecting that are affecting the image. So, such as a blue sky might affect and eliminate areas in the shadows and cause them to go more blue. Um, same same deal here. There's some yellows that are affecting the the ambient light of the of the figure.